thoughts of my training came to mind on my way back to my room. Would I be ready? Would everything work out in the end? What about the issues I was having on top of the war? What about Damien and his lady love? Are we going to see them? I couldn't stop myself from thinking all of these thoughts before hearing the soft pattering of footsteps walking to an interesting rhythm like a waltz. Huh? I instinctively followed the noise to the door leading into the grand hall. The door was barely open a crack, but still managed to echo the sound of waltzing from it, leading to gaze upon who is forming the sound. Come on, you two cuties. Yay, I'm glad. As my eyes lo locked onto Damien and Twyla, my mind went blank. I knew how to avoid Damien's mind reading, and it had become a natural instinct for me whenever I saw him. Wipe all memory, wipe all thoughts from brain. Still, I watched as Damien and Twyla danced around the room in a sweet and slow waltz, with Twyla blushing a deep crimson and Damien smiling comfortingly to his wife. It was adorable to watch. Twyla and Damien's marriage was still new, the wedding having only been a few months ago. Twyla was still getting used to the idea of being a part of the family, but every day seemed to open her up a bit more to Damien's brothers and to me. I had hoped one day to get close enough to see her more energetic side which Damien and the other wives claimed she had, but it would take time. Still, seeing her be so shy in Damien's arms seemed rather sweet. Damien, I don't think I can do this. I can't focus like this. Relax, Twyla. I promise you won't trip. <laughs> mm, if you say so. Oh. Twyla focused solely on the steps she was making, most likely to forget that Damien was holding her so close to him. Damien simply chuckled before dipping her back, making her grip onto him and gasp. Damien, don't be a jerk! Relax. <laughs> it's okay. Aw. Look at those two cuties. Slowly, Damien lifted Twyla back up, locking eyes with her and releasing her hand to cup her cheek. You've been nervous this whole time we've been here. What's wrong? Twyla bit her lip and nuzzled Damien's hand, closing her eyes. I furrowed my eyebrows. What was going on with Twyla? I can't help it, Damien. I mean, we're in the demon world, for Christ's sake. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and? I could tell Damien wasn't going to let it go. Twyla looked up at him at last and cupped his hand in hers, leaning further into his palm. You can read my mind. You know what I'm going to say. I do. But I'd rather hear you say it. Why? Because it will make you feel better. I know it. A single moment passed before Twyla let out a small sigh and nodded. As she did, Damien led them back into a slow waltz, simple enough for Twyla to follow along and keep talking. Part of me just... I don't know. It feels like it belongs here in this world. Like I belong here. Damien, I've never felt so alive before. But I know that the human world is my home. Damien nodded and spun her around slightly. As he did, Twyla took in a breath, physically relaxing a bit more and becoming lost in the dance Damien was leading her through. But this place also brought you so many bad memories, so I feel terrible for feeling at home here. I don't know, Damien. I know that it's because I'm only half human, but... Okay, so that's your story. Interesting. I stared wide-eyed at Twyla. She was half-demon? What kind of demon was she? Questions gathered in my chest, remembering that Damien was still able to hear her thoughts. How do you gather questions in your chest, is what I want to know. Damien, however, only smiled and pulled Twyla closer to him, making her gasp. Twyla, it's alright. I promise I'm okay. But Damien, you want to be human. And what does that have to do with anything? Damien... Finally, Twyla stopped dancing and stood still, looking up to her husband with serious eyes. Damien stared back, listening intently. You married me even though I'm technically fey. Ah. You love me even though I'm proud of who I am. I don't want to alienate you because I find this world to be as beautiful as my mother said it would be. Silence passed once again between them. I felt sorry for Twyla. She seemed serious about the whole ordeal, but Damien's simple smile practically melted the tension from the air. This world is your home too. As much as I hated being here, this world was the place I was born in. 
Damien brought Twyla's hand to his lips, pressing his love on her wrist and moving to gently place a kiss on her forehead, making the blush on her face intensify at the intimate gestures. He chuckled at how he elicited such a response from his wife before nuzzling her no to nose to nose. But, if I'm with you, then I can make brand new memories wherever we are, even here in the demon world. The past is the past. My future is with you. Oh, that's so sweet. My heart instantly melted at the words. It was so sweet to hear Damien say that to Twyla, I could hardly contain myself. Twyla stared up at Damien, flattered and in awe. I couldn't help but smile at the sight. Damien really did love her, and she indeed loved him enough to care about his feelings. I love you, Damien. <laughs> I love you too. What surprised me was Twyla gently leaning up and brushing her lips against Damien's, catching him off guard as well before he pressed back and kissed her lovingly. I nearly squealed at the sight of how cute they were. Angel, control yourself. Damien wrapped his arms around her waist as she tangled her own around his neck, leaning back in the dance embrace they were in and becoming absorbed within each other. I took that moment to quickly sneak away, hoping that Damien wouldn't catch me peeping. Oh, hey, you. One of these days, I guess on either Matthew or Damien's route, so I'm gonna have to pick the wife, like, go, like training alone option again, just to see what his interaction with Carrie is. Cause I'd like to see that. As I marched back to my room, I was stopped by Sam. I stared at him as he leaned against the door to our room as if he had been waiting for me for a while. Sorry, I was like squealing over your brothers and their wives, they're so cute. Seems like it's only Matthew and uh, Norrin. Who, like, don't have- like, Norrin's not wor really worried about anything, where Matthew's like, what's wrong, Norrin? They're just, like, really cute together. Hey. Yo. Hey. I knew that this could only mean one thing. My test was waiting for me. Yay! I pressed my lips together, nervous, but knowing that I had to go through it regardless of how I felt. Diana's words began to flood back into my mind as I took Sam's hand and gave it a squeeze. Sam squeezed my hand back, nodding and led me away from our bedroom towards the war room, where Diana was waiting for us. As Diana locked her sights on us, she let out a sigh and gestured to the table, where a large conglomerate of items were placed and presented. Sam halted his stop, staring at the table in absolute shock. I, however, merely grew confused. On the table was an assortment of single flowers, each of a different color and type. They were formed in a magic circle pattern, but there was no magic to be seen. When did you? Is this the stuff that's needed for the um, that demon marriage ritual, I wonder? Hush. <laughs> this is for her. Hush. Hush now. Sam instantly shut his mouth as I looked at Sam in confusion. He knew what this was? I turned to Diana completely lost. Dear, do you know what I've prepared here? I stared at the table, unsure how to discern it. A couple of ideas came to mind, but I didn't want to be wrong if this was part of the test. Sam knew what it was, too, given the strong reaction from him. Could it have been? I don't even answer. A demon marriage ritual? That was it. It had to have been it. Why else would Sam react so strangely? It had been on his mind, and now it was staring me dead in the face. Diana nodded, gesturing to the flowers. This is a marriage ritual. Freshly blossomed flowers, holding peak-worthy magical essence, arranged in a magic circle, are part of what a binding ritual needs to happen. Part? Diana nodded and looked to the table. The other part is a precious item forged between two souls to bind them together. I couldn't believe it. This was my test? There was no way I was ready for this, but... Here I was, staring at a setup that just screamed, go through with it. Part of me was angry and aggravated. I had to go through this for some stupid dragon's power. This was something Sam and I were supposed to discuss together. Now it felt like an arranged agreement. Look at it this way, you've got a dragon's blessing on your, uh, union. So, you know, that's pretty cool. What was I going to do? The test was obviously going to make me go through with this for the sake of Sam, but I still wasn't ready. Soulbinding seemed very heavy, and as much as I love Sam, I needed to be 100% clear. So you were gonna get married to a guy that you weren't 100% clear about? Okay. 
Sam stepped forward and glared at Diana. We're not doing this. I don't care. So even Sam's like, this is not supposed to be a forced arranged thing, which is good. I mean, yeah, it should be something you both want to do together. Pardon? <laughs> Excuse? You heard me. We're not going through with this. I stared at Sam wide-eyed. What? He didn't want to go through with it anymore? What was going on? I remembered clearly that he wanted to do it. Now he was against it? Sam looked to me and I could suddenly see the reason why buried in his eyes. He still wanted to, but not like this. I could tell he was throwing away something he desperately wanted for my own sake. Sam. Sam turned and grasped my shoulder, staring into my eyes. I know that I want to do this. I want to do this more than anything. But you are more important to me than some dumb ritual. I will never let you force yourself to make this decision if you're nowhere near ready. I felt like crying. This was exactly why I loved him. This was one of a million reasons why Sam was so important to me. My heart felt at ease looking into his eyes and letting rogue tears roll down my cheeks. It may have been like a simple thing, but to me this was important. I gently caressed Sam's cheek, feeling the warmth of his skin beneath my hand and thanking every deity I knew that I had him beside me as mine. However, as Diana cleared her throat, we both turned to her in reaction. What really threw us off was seeing her cover her mouth, hiding some sort of smirk that was peeking out between her fingers. Who said anything about you going through with it? Oh. Sam and I became dumbfounded. What? We didn't have to go through with it? Then why was it set up? For fuck's sake, if you're messing with us. Diana began to laugh hysterically, causing Sam to stop talking and become dumbfounded once again. What the hell is going on in this game? <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> oh, gosh. What the fuck, Diana? I was beyond lost. As Diana continued to laugh, she curled over her stomach and covered her face, trying to catch her breath. This was perfect. This was absolutely perfect. I'm glad she's having a good time. Diana! Now I became frustrated. What was so funny about this? Diana finally stopped laughing, wiping her eyes from the tears that had formed from laughing so hard, and grinned at, at me and Sam. I didn't set this up to make you two do it. That would ruin the point of the test. Then what is the test? I became flustered, now mentally scrambled as to what was... What... What was I going on? Words? As my body suddenly began to sink into the ground, however, I gasped and looked down, seeing a large purple pentagram pulling me and Sam into the floor. Whoa! Ah! Demon marriage lets you know where your soul partner is at all times. The test is that you find your husband without it. Okay. I couldn't even fight back as I was engulfed by darkness at last. I couldn't tell how long I was trapped in that darkness. All I knew was that I was going to wake up and find Sam. As I opened my eyes, I had to adjust to the bright light around me and the sound of nature in my ears. Oh, that beautiful forest again. I rubbed my eyes and found myself in a forest, laying underneath a large tree with burn marks across its bark. I could tell that this would be my starting place and my marker if I got lost. So, while I felt terrible for the tree, I was thankful to have something to visually reference. So this was my test. I had to find the man I loved without anything but my heart and my instincts. This was cheesy as hell, expecting someone to find someone else using the power of love. I loved Sam deeply, but I didn't know if it would be strong enough to guide me through a terrain I was unaware of to Sam, who also could have been wandering around looking for me. There were so many variables to consider. Still, this was a test for a reason. I had to figure this out. I cupped my hands together and shouted, knowing his name would be a way to bring him to me. Omaris! The nearby birds around me fluttered wildly into the air in surprise of my shout. But Sam didn't appear. What the hell? That was supposed to have worked. Something must have had him under holy magic or something to negate the demon summoning. Another part of the test. Guess I wasn't allowed to cheat. Also, that's the wrong allowed, I just realized. <laughs> it was worth a try. Alright, calm down and think about it. You gotta think. 
I had to be methodical about this. There was no use in panicking over the situation. The forest couldn't be that big. Could it? I shook my head. No. Nope. I had to find him if it was the last thing I do. This was the only way to get the dragon's power, as difficult and unnecessary as it was. <sighs> I looked around, trying to decide where to start. I started heading to the left of the tree's burn marks. It was better than no direction at all, and it was a start. Each step I took became one filled with haste. I wanted to find Sam soon, and I didn't want to laze about this. It felt like hours went by until I stopped and looked around, exhausted from walking so far at such a fast pace. I leaned against a nearby tree, catching my breath. <sighs> How the hell am I going to find him? Something in my heart began to feel heavy. What if I wasn't able to find him? What if this was an impossible quest? I felt my body slide down the side of the tree, making me sit down at the base in fear. This couldn't be. Sadness and ache began to consume my thoughts. There was no way to track him. No way to find him at all in this place. I'd be searching forever, only hoping that I would find him and pray that he was alive when I did. My hands combed through my hair as I fought back tears. Please let me wake up if this was a dream. Please let me see him again. Giving up so soon, my dear? At Diana's voice, I suddenly gasped and looked up, only to find no one around. I quickly stood and scanned the area, but alas, there was only trees around. Diana, I don't know what to do. How can I find him? You have all of the means to find him. You're just not thinking it through. I looked into the air, confused as ever. What did she mean? I didn't have anything but the clothes I was wearing. Diana chuckled slightly. Think. Besides his heart, what else did he give you as a token of his love? As she said it, the answer came into my mind, replaying the night Sam proposed to me in the night sky. I looked to my hand, seeing the engagement ring Sam had given me resting on my finger, glistening in the light. <laughs> there we are. The other part of a marriage ritual. Second part? This was- Indeed. It seems he intended to ask you to be his, in body, heart, and spirit. My heart gave a hard and heated thump against my chest, agreeing with Diana's words. He had been prepared all along to ask me to be his, but wanted to at least give me what I wanted first before asking for what he wanted. I smiled, staring at the sparkling emeralds and diamonds on my ring, and finally feeling the magic pulse within it. Still, I was lost on how to use it. How will this help me? Diana chuckled once more, her voice quieter than before. I can't give you all of the answers, dear. But at least you won't be lost anymore. Her voice finally vanished into the air, leaving me alone once more. However, my focus was on my ring. I remembered clearly that this wasn't an ordinary ring, but one magically forged the night Sam proposed. Sam, I'm going to find you. I nodded and felt a wave of hope and courage rush through my body. I was ready now. I focus on the ring, trying to will it to give me a sign, a hint, anything to help me find Sam. As I stared into it, a word popped into my mind. Letting it loose, I could feel magic pulse into the air from around my body. Amor. My hand suddenly became wrapped in green chain-shaped markings, sprouting from the base of my ring before jutting off of my skin and flying forward through the air and deeper into the forest. I felt myself grinning from ear to ear. I was going to find him. I quickly burst into a sprint, following the ethereal chain that was leading me towards Sam, uncaring of the harsh breaths I was taking or the pain that shot through my legs. I needed to keep going forward. All that mattered was that I had to keep moving forward. The chain twisted and turned around trees and often arced around obstacles for me, guiding me perfectly towards a thicker brush of woods. The amount of bushes and smaller trees began to grow the further I went in, but I continued. Soon enough, I found myself walking towards the descending mouth of a cave, where a familiar brown-haired demon boy laid face down at its edge. Sam! I ran forward and slid onto my knees, lifting his head into my lap. Around his neck was a golden collar, which, upon my toe, my, 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 chur, my chooch, <clears throat> upon my touch, vanished and caused Sam to stir from his com comatose state. <clears throat> what? Poor Sam. 
My heart began to swell as I stared down at him, tears welling up into my eyes. This was really him. He was safe here in my arms, and I had found him. I'm a little worried about the fact that we found him outside a cave, to be honest. Do you remember that dream we had? His emerald gaze bore into mine, still dazed from the sleep he was in. As he stared up at me, Sam lifted his hand and caressed my cheek, causing me to Excuse me. Causing me to unconsciously nuzzle into it. There you are. <laughs> nice. Boy, you are going to let me kiss you. I couldn't help but repeat the fir first words he had ever said to me. They had engraved themselves into my mind, and I was forever thankful for that day. So silly. Sam's lips curved into a smug smile, remembering the phrase perfectly. Then hurry up and do it. I grinned and bent down, capturing his lips with my own. My entire body felt complete as our lips touched. I didn't care if he took energy from me in it. I had found him. Well done. Good job. To our surprise, the voice didn't ring in our heads. The voice of the dragon echoed from the cave, causing me and Sam to separate and stare into the void. You have proven to me the strength of your heart. Now, for the final test, Sam must prove his. Yeah, I thought this might be the cave. I instinctively gripped Sam tighter. We weren't going to be separated again, were we? Sam, however, slowly stood up, guiding me with him and glared into the darkness. Hit me with your best shot. I'm ready. A dark, echoing chuckle reverberated from the cave, causing a sliver of fear to rush down my body. I was beyond nervous, but we had come this far. We were going to win his powers. Step into the cave. And face me. I will judge you. Alright, moment of truth. The memories of my nightmare began to fill my head. What if it was a trick? What if the dragon killed Sam while he was in there? Despite my frightening thoughts, Sam stepped towards the cave, nodding. You got it. Every voice and nerve in my head screamed for me to stop him. I didn't want him to die. At the same time, this was a test. He had to do it. I was placing my heart on the table and hoping it wouldn't be ripped apart with a single blast. Let him do it. He let you do your test. It's only right. I had to trust him. He could do this. I watched as Sam walked into the cave, following behind until he vanished into the darkness. I stood once again between the light and the dark, waiting. Waiting. Moments of silence ran by, filling my body with anxiousness. Was he safe? Was he okay? At the sudden shout of a dragon's roar, I jumped and gripped the cave wall, frightened to the core. It echoed into silence out of the mouth of the cave, but I became worried. What happened? What was going on? The faint echo of footsteps began to make their way towards me, despite me not being able to see into the dark. I hoped it was Sam. I prayed it was Sam unscathed. Oh. That's a little worrying. As Sam finally appeared out of the darkness, I gasped. Not at seeing him at last, but when I saw his eyes. They were swirling with red and green flames along the whites of his eyes until his emerald irises glowed in the shadows of the cave. Just from seeing him, I could tell he had changed and had become much more powerful. Sam? Sam grinned at me, stepping up in front of me and placing a hand on my head. Sup, you doofus. <sighs> I bit my lip and shook my head, pounding a fist into his chest before hugging him to me tightly. So you're not possessed then? Are we good? Whoa. Hey, it's all right. I'm right here. Thank God you are. May your battle be won, Lord of Dragons. That's a pretty epic title, not gonna lie. I looked over Sam's shoulder into the darkness, seeing the faint outline of a large dragon's head fade away before my eyes. What the... Lord of Dragons? Dovahkiin? <laughs> Before Sam could answer me, a light burst into the air, causing us to grip onto each other and shut our eyes. The warmth of the light seemed to comfort and ease our travel to wherever the dragon was sending us. Regardless, I clung to Sam tightly, desperate not to let go of him. Okay, his eyes are back to normal. 
When we opened our eyes at last, we were in the war room, in the middle of the space with the rebel leaders, the incubi, and their wives staring wide-eyed at us. Before anyone could move, however, Diana applauded at us, making everyone turn their heads towards her in confusion. Well done, you two. Wait, you knew where they were all along? Huh. She told us they were gone. She didn't say she didn't know where. Listen, that's rude. How rude. At least they're safe now. Twyla, always looking at the positives. James, however, took a step towards Sam, peering at him. Sam's eyes had returned to normal, but I bet that his aura was different now that he was Lord of Dragons, or whatever the dragon had called him. At least you're safe now. You were worried about him too, dude. Dude. Don't ruin it. He has a reputation. <laughs> called out. <laughs> He's much stronger than before now. You okay with that chuckle there, Damien? <laughs> He sounded like he kind of broke there. <laughs> Sam gave James a smug look before holding out his hand. Yeah, I'm all right now. The two brothers shook hands, smiling at one another. I was happy to know that he was all right as well, giving him a squeeze. Diana, however, cleared her throat as the rebel leaders took off, catching everyone's attention. Well, I hate to break up this little reunion, but we have a battle to fight tomorrow. We should rest. Ah, that must mean we're at our last fun time. Everyone was in agreement, especially my aching body. The run in the forest was not a kind one. As everyone began to leave, however, Diana called out. Sam, a moment please. Alone. Hmm. I was worried about what Diana wanted to speak to Sam about alone, but I left the room with the rest of the group regardless. Diana seemed adamant. However, I remained at the door listening in. Angel, you're just... Terrible at listening in on conversations and stuff. So, you got me alone. What do you want? I peeked into the room to see Diana faced away from Sam, who had his arms crossed and was waiting for her to speak. Tomorrow is the day we head out to fight him. We've been fighting for ten years, and it will finally end. You're stalling. What is it? Do you know how many lives have been lost because of this war? Sam finally lowered his arms and glared at the back of Diana's head. I glared as well. Why was she bringing this up? From her tone of voice, however, she seriously wanted an answer. Hundreds? Thousands? Nine and a half million lives. Good grief. Sam's breath hitched in shock as did mine. That many lives have been lost? Was this war truly as bloody as the rebel leaders described it to be? Diana turned her head and stared into Sam's shocked gaze. I had to send off and watch almost nine and a half million soldiers marching to their deaths. This world lost that many lives and had to take their blood and ashes into its soil as the battles we fought ended. The Demon Lord, however, ravaged and slaughtered thousands of innocent lives in between, sending more people to their deaths just because they were in his way. Why are you telling me this? All of those lives could have been spared. Diana turned around and glared hard at Sam, and to my surprise, Sam froze in place. Every single life that was lost during this war could have lived, could have been leading normal lives. Sam didn't open his mouth. Why wasn't he saying anything? I felt the need to step in, but I was stopped by a hand over my mouth. Mm? Shh. <laughs> hey, Damien. My partner in crime. I looked up to see Damien covering my mouth and staring into the room intently. I didn't understand. Why was he hushing me? I looked back into the room as Diana began to step towards Sam. My kingdom became the target of the Demon Lord's wrath, and I came back to the castle and my people screaming to the sky and burning in the flames. My family was taken away from me, and there is nothing I can do to bring them back. As Diana finally got close to Sam, leaning nose to nose with him, her eyes began to glow a cruel, cold, golden color, making me worry. And it's all because of you, your brothers, and that human. Tell me how you really feel, though. What? <clears throat> like lightning, Diana and Sam slammed into the far wall. However, instead of Diana against the wall, Sam was held against it with Diana's hand over his mouth. What surprised me the most was Sam staring at Diana with almost a shocked and fearful expression. What the hell? 
Sam gripped Diana's arm, but for some reason she didn't seem to be affected by his strength. Like he was gripping stone. Where did her strength come from? I want to get it through your head that this war is your fault. Yours and that human's fault. My parents, my sister, their lives were ripped away from this world because of you two. My kingdom burned, drowned in the flames of the demon lord because of you two. Technically, that's not really true, though. It's not like you were betrothed to Sam. You were betrothed to James. And it was my grandfather who reached out to these guys and they decided to leave a shitty home situation. So it's not really our fault. But if it makes you feel better to blame it on us, then go right ahead, I guess. Your brothers were too enthralled with the human world to give a damn about where they came from. So I could have never convinced them to come back. You were my only hope, and you decided that the human was more important than the peace of this world. Because of your love for her, you stayed in the human world and caused so much death. Maybe I should step in. I slightly thrashed in Damien's arms, but he tightened his hold on me, keeping me quiet. I growled, knowing that I couldn't force myself out without giving both of our positions away and continued to watch. I want to burn that anger into your soul. Every single life that has been lost in this war to stop the Demon Lord was because of you and your love. I don't really agree with that. It's just the Demon Lord is a psychopath who likes to murder people. Ah. <sighs> Diana's hand slowly moved from Sam's mouth to his collar and gripped it, pulling him up onto his toes. However, as they continued to stare at each other, Sam's eyes began to glow a bright red and gold color, the mixture swirling in his green irises. This war wasn't. Yes, it was! Diana quickly pulled Sam forward and slammed him back into the wall, causing him to jerk and wince, growling but continuing to stare at Diana's angry expression. Around Diana's body was a dark purple aura, flickering like a wildfire with her screams. If I had just killed that human and dragged you back, the world would not be suffering as it is! If that human wasn't alive, then the Demon Lord would not have done what he did! You would have been killed by an angel, probably, although you did kill us sometimes in other endings. This is a very weird thing. But, you know what? Let's just get through this conversation, instead of me just, like, being like, ah! Oh, E uh, mm, hmm, uh, hmm, I don't know about that. If you and your brothers had just stayed, this war would not have happened! We're gonna end it! We will! And when this war is over, I will never have to see you or that damn human ever again! I stared wide-eyed as Diana lowered her head down and slightly loose loosened her grip on Sam's collar. Her back was arched over, twitching and spasming as Diana gritted her teeth. That is why... You two must survive. What? Diana's voice weakened immensely, drenched in softened, choked sobs and whimpers. You two need to survive this war. You need to protect her. And stay alive, no matter what. My heart dropped and my mind was lost. Where was this coming from? I felt Damien loosen his grip over my mouth slightly as I watched Sam straighten up to look down at Diana. The aura around Diana slowly began to die out with each word Diana choked out. If either of you die, then this war will have happened for nothing. All of those lives, all of this destruction, the only reason we are here is because of you two. Diana. Diana looked up to Sam, a new hopeless pain burning in her eyes as tears began to stream down her face. Swear to me, brute. That you will take responsibility for this and live, no matter what happens. Damn the war, damn my life. But you must swear that you understand and will take this responsibility. My heart was hurting at the sight of Diana. She looked so broken, barely gripping to Sam and no longer forcing him against the wall behind him. Sam, however, pressed his lips together. What was he going to do? Sam, staring at Diana's expression, slowly grabbed onto both of Diana's horns and pulled Diana's head downward, pressing his forehead to the top of her head. I swear. For the first and only time in my life, I watched Diana crumple to the ground onto her knees with Sam following her down. Diana's hands released Sam and 
covered her face before she started sobbing violently into her palms. Sam kept his hands on her horns, pressing his forehead into the top of her head with closed eyes. Red energy from Diana's body slowly began to slide along her form and into Sam's head, slowly wrapping around him and fading away. I stepped away from the door and looked at Damien, seeing him look down at the ground in shame. Damien. It is our fault, but we can't change the past. We can only end this. Come try it, Damien! Thank you so much for speaking sense and logic. I still don't think it's... I mean, yes, it was the straw that broke the camel's back, but there could have been another straw that happened later. You have no idea, but you're right about you can't change the past, you can only change the future. <sighs> I nodded, feeling the weight of the world rest on my soul. In a way, I felt completely responsible for this war even happening. I loved Sam enough to keep him away from his duty, his reason for birth, which... I mean, he wasn't ever going to be ruler, but whatever. I had chained him to me, and I wouldn't let him go. I looked back to Diana, seeing her shaking and crying as Sam continued to remain still, holding her horns. The energy had vanished, and all that was left were the tears Diana was shedding. Did Sam take her energy? Sam took away her rage. Oh, thanks, Damien. Wait, what? I looked up at Damien, confused. He was an incubus, so he was only able to take away sexual energy, right? He could take other forms of energy, too? Sam can do that? Yes, actually. While he's an incubus, he's also part brute demon, just like the rest of us. I was surprised. Sam was part brute demon? So were the boys? Damien chuckled softly, assumingly because he read my mind, and nodded. Our mothers were succubi. The demon lord, though, he's no incubus. He's a brute demon who feeds on and uses rage energy. That's true, I never really thought about that. Damien looked into the room, losing part of his smile. Sam, our brothers and I, were born incubi, but Sam inherited more brute demon traits than the rest of us. Thus, why he had the nicknames Brute and Monster. Because he wasn't like a regular incubus. Damien nodded. I looked at Sam, seeing him stare into Diana's scalp with a focused but intense expression. The more I thought about it, the more I could see what he meant. Sam never got into the idea of taking and using sexual energy. He was angry all of the time in the demon world, so he fed on rage energy instead. It wasn't until he went to the human world with us when he began to rely on his incubus powers. I could only imagine it. Sam, who hated his father, and was the rebel son of the Incubi brothers, full of anger. That was probably why he was so forward when we had met and full of attitude. Still, I fell in love with him. He was truly a wonderful man. He did everything he could to make me happy and feel safe. He always put me first, which flattered me and made me feel incredibly special. I didn't know what to say to that. Diana eventually stopped crying and wiped the tears from her face, but she didn't raise her head. Damien, whom I thought would have stayed longer, disappeared, leaving me alone to watch. Sam, if I die, would you? Oh dear, not the death flags, Diana. What do you what? I stared, hoping that Diana would reply with a clearer question, but she merely closed her eyes and let out a small sigh. Suddenly the noise in the room became silent, but I could see Diana's lips move. Sam's eyes widened as she finished speaking, but he didn't say anything back, even as Diana looked up at Sam. When Sam finally reacted, he let out a silent sigh and spoke back, the sound of his voice negated through whatever silence engulfed the room. As my body began to collapse, I watched as Diana listened and nodded with a smile before fading into the ground through a dark pentagram. Sam, however, remained there, staring where Diana had been and took in whatever she had said. Was she asking him to, like, rule? She died. Upon the demand of my body, I began to make my way towards the bedroom, not wanting Sam to know that I had been eavesdropping. 